We have the Scotland show coming live to you from Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. Just going to fix my background here. The kids were in the office with me and uh, they kind of jumbled all my stuff around. So I'm just going to tweak it and you guys are going to pretend you didn't see. Okay. <laughs> it still doesn't look right. Oh, well, welcome to tonight's show. We have Scotland uh, tonight, always on Sunday. Tis hello from Scotland. We also on some nights have Ireland, Wales, uh, you, places in UK, Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia, joining us on this show. And we love it because we're getting feedback from viewers that it's really bringing people together. There's so many different styles of music, Celtic music that can be played and enjoyed. And it just really, truly is an enjoyable Sunday evening. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my co-host, Peter Wood from the Shetland Islands, Scotland, Nova Scotia. Please give a warm applause as I bring him up. Here we go. Hi, Hello, Rebecca. Peter. How you doing? Are you fine? How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah, excellent. Good. I'm a little bit, I'm a little, I'm a little disheveled, was down at the beach today. Tried to get the boat out, but it's just too windy. So I'm back up on shore now, and uh, I'm with you guys on the Scotland show, and I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite shows. It's rising to number one on our ratings, on our charts. Uh, it's soaring, uh, the views. We Last week, we were up to 8,000 views. So this week, we are shooting our goal is, what we say, Peter, 10,000? We're going ah, for 10,000. That'll do, eh? <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, we've had a nice day here. Too. Well, it's been very foggy in Shetland today. We've had a lot of fog, so so um, so we haven't Same. seen much. Fun. But this is a, It's still. It's ten o'clock at night, and as you can see outside, it's daylight nearly still. So we're nearly getting to the middle of the summer now, where it's daylight all the time. Yes. So. So what so have we got lined up tonight, Peter? We have some fabulous things for you tonight. Um, tonight, uh, Shona and Paul that are normally with us, Shona and Paul, they've, they've not just been feeling very well for the last couple of days, so they're having a night off tonight. They said it's nothing serious, but these guys have been doing an awful, awful lot of work, and uh, so just having a wee break tonight. But uh, Ross is still with us tonight, Ross and myself, the stalwart. Yep. And we also have two guests on with us tonight. We have... Uh, Gary Peterson from Shetland. Gary's a banjo player and mandolin player. I saw uh, that. Incredible musician, incredible musician um, uh, involved. Wow. And we'll speak about the bands he's been involved with and things. And we've also got uh, David Greenberg coming on uh, in the second half of the show. And I think uh, D David's actually based in the States, but he's a kind of exponent uh, yeah. of b Baroque music and Cape Breton music. Yep. <laughs> so that's quite a contrast. So we're going to have a wee chat about that. And we'll, we'll maybe so. find out. Maybe it's not as big a contrast as we think. And I, I was looking today and nice. I was doing some uh, looking about today and I reckon the Vikings from Shetland would have made it to Cape Breton at some point in time. Would they have brought us anything good from over there no no they came to steal your fish oh, no. <laughs> well we're we're honored that uh, we're honored to be trading stories here back and forth over the past couple of weeks because uh we have a lot of stories as cape bretoners ourselves, and uh we both are countries with a lot of pride and love in our hearts so it's really yeah. interesting and intriguing to bring all of us together on this show Next week, we have a, a Mi'kmaq fiddle, uh, fiddle player, Morgan Tony, and he's going to be playing with Mary Beth uh, well, one of these Sundays. And my gosh, Peter, just incredible uh, how he intertwines the Mi'kmaq language into, Scott, into the fiddle playing. So I'm yeah. really looking forward to the next few weeks, but uh, I won't yeah. keep you. Let's, who yeah. would you like me to bring up? Can you bring on Ross, my old companion from Pitlochry, please? I certainly can. Is That'd be good. Here we go. Good, good evening, evening. Patlochry. How are you? Very well. How are you doing, Peter? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ross McNaughton. Uh, Ross is our kind of resident piper on the show. And uh, the, 
there was somebody actually messaged. That's one thing we didn't say beforehand, actually. Please, folk, please message in. Uh, yeah. Rebecca will stick messages up to let us know where you are. If you've got any questions, we want you to interact with us. Show. It's great fun. Um, and we try to um, keep it going as, as much. There's Ernie Curry and Dumfries. There's a Scottish person in there straight away. Um, somebody messaged me through the week and said, does Ross not play big Highland bagpipes? And I said, uh, yeah, he does. Uh, and I think you explained that two or three weeks ago, didn't you? It's because of the neighbours and what time of night we're at just now. Uh, exactly. I've got I've got very big neighbours, and it's very late at night. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to upset the neighbours, but especially no. big neighbours. Uh, yeah. 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 I, think, I think you mentioned about the 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 text that came in, Peter. Did you? What was that? Yeah. 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 From John they asked about that, and I, I said to them, you know, just we'll, we'll maybe get big pipes some week once you speak to the neighbours or something like that. Okay. You know, I'll sort it out and next week. Do you, do you fancy starting us off tonight, uh, Ross? Uh, being an ex regiment man yourself, I think you're going to start off with something quite kind of poignant tonight for us, aren't you? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's been a celebration this on Friday, especially in the 12th, uh, the 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 Highland Division at St. Valerie. The, this is the 80th year of, of that part of history, which I won't go into. It's there. It's documented for you to look at. But uh, all the pipers around the world played a tune for the heroes of St. Valerie, the 51st Highland Division. So I'm going to start my set with uh, the first two parts of the heroes of St. Valerie as a lament. And then I'm going to play the first two tunes that the Athol Highlanders march on to for their, their annual gathering, which we missed a couple of weeks ago uh, due to social distancing. So uh, yeah. a tribute to both. Wonderful. Take it away, Ross. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. <laughs>
Good man. Thanks, Ross. Brilliant. No problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two six eight matches there, the Dovecot Park and the Glenrill Highlanders. Indeed. Yes, yes. Uh, two two matches. I played in one of the first broadcasts I ever done on uh, Radio Scotland. I played the two of them together. Did you? Eh? And uh, and of course you are one of the Athol Highlanders. We've never really spoken about that yet. Um, Ladies and gentlemen listening all over the world, the Athol Highlanders, uh, the Duke of Athol, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ross, is the only person in Britain allowed to have a private army, am I right in saying that? That's correct, legally. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, so um, legally he can have one and Ross is one of that army. And we're very, very scary. Absolutely. Yeah, you look you look scary. I've seen you marching about. You look quite a scary looking lot, right enough. But is that scary at the beginning of the night or after the end of the night at the end of the pub? Kind of I, I both. both. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought I'd do since you'd done that one just before we bring Gary on, I'll play a wee couple of tunes in the box because just to tie in with what you were doing there, um, the fifty first division, of course. Um, when they ended up away at the prisoner of war camps, uh, they actually made up a dance, the real of the 51st, which I'm sure you've probably come across. Uh, and, and it's known to this day as a country dance. And of course, it was originally danced with eight men because it was all uh, eight men in the together. Um, but now it's become a couple dance. So I thought I'd play a wee set of reels just to get us in, and then we'll bring on Gary Peterson after that. So here's uh, the first tune is the Drunken Piper, which. Uh, that's fair enough. I've never heard of the likes before, have you? <laughs> me, me and... Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. <laughs> After that, a, a wee set of pipe tunes, Tail Toddle, um, Jock Wilson's Ball, and one called Barney's Bermoral at the end. So here's a wee set of tunes before we bring Gary on. <laughs> that we would have had a little dance along to. So, um, great tunes, great pipe tunes. Always played in the accordion as well. So remember, folks, if anybody out there, uh, text in, text in, let us know that you're there. And if you can share the link about, that would be wonderful. Get this uh, show on the road. Loving doing it for here in Shetland. It's looking so much lighter here in Shetland than it does in Pit Lockley, Ross. It does. It's really uh, dark, dark uh, yeah. 
So, anyway, what we're going to do tonight, uh, hello, John Anderson, hello, how are you doing? What we're going to do now is bring on an old friend of mine, um, Gary Peterson. Uh, and Gary uh, was one of the founder members of a band in Shetland called Homebrew. Um, and we're going to bring Gary on and have a chat with him now. Gary plays banjo and mandolin. Hello, Gary, how are you doing? Hi, hi, Peter. How are you doing, Ross? Good to see you. Sounding well, good there. How's things tonight? Uh, uh, I, think I, I think I saw you walking by, by my cabin gate this morning, didn't I? Were you, I, I, did, I? I was looking for you in the window. I didn't see you there. Uh, I thought I saw you. I was uh, sitting there at the computer and I thought, there's Gary a wee past. I'm always out of the work. Yeah, it was about <laughs> foggy the day. It was good to hear that tune for the 51st Division you played there, Peter. Because I used to be in the 251 Highland in my ah, TA days. Ah. I was, I was ah. a little bit scouting it in my TA days. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, when I was a young boy, when I was 17. <laughs> Russell can all about that lately. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Love it, Scoots. Love it, Scoots, hey. That's good. So how are you getting on, Gary? Are you doing fine? Are you doing good. Hey, I'm on, I'm on furlough at the moment for a, for three weeks, so enjoying the okay. time off when the weather's good. It's It's been a funny old time. It's been a funny time for musicians. And, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody saying, Gary Peterson, you're looking really good. I just made my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I saw Douglas Eisberg stuff in Denmark message in there too. So, hi, Douglas. Good to see you on here. I, I did see that. I saw that. I saw that. Excellent. We're all over the place. Um, do you fancy Gary giving us a wee tune to begin with? And then we'll have a, I, I, uh, I was going to do some pipe tunes for you two, seeing your pipers, both of you. Brilliant. Fantastic. I'll, know, I'll know name them. I'll see if you can them when I finish them. Okay, excellent. Is this, have we got these the banjo to begin with? Are we? No. Banjo to begin with, yeah. Four string banjo, Ross. <laughs> Second oh. mixed up in the second tune there. <laughs> no, what 
was the second tune pipe made by Sam Scott? It was meant to be. Uh, oh. It was it was meant to be Sam Scott. I I played the second part wrong though. But the first part, the first tune was eighth Black Witch on Passchendaele Ridge. Ah, yeah, I didn't get that. It, it was written by a guy called Sandy Bremner for Kethness. Okay, okay. Yeah, and nice tune. The second tune, Sam Scott, and because the last one was Drummond Castle. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Magic tune, sound of bright. Sound of really so good. Really I made up your. I did my own variations on the pipe, Sam Scott. There, pipe major Sam Scott. As uh, as the people will hear, that, um, a lot of people know who Gary is anyway. And, um, but one of the things um, you're famous for is triplets or lots of triplets or whatever you call them, because I think there's yeah. more than three. So, sometimes five, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Depends on which drink I've had, so usually, yeah. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Ross is on his phone again. I don't know what he's doing. I, I, I am recording, but I was going to say there's a lot of echo on your side, Peter. I don't know. Yeah, I hear that. I'm, I'm hearing that from you. That's, uh, is that going away? Yeah. Yeah. We were. Right, right. We'll take it. That's all right. But, Gary, can you tell uh, everybody just to have an idea? Homebrew, right? For your band. For you. Yeah. Oh, I've lost Peter. Hello, Peter. <laughs> I think he was asking about home brew. I'm, I'm yeah, a, Peter's disappeared. I think he's well, yeah, we've, we've been on the go since 1978 with home brew. Uh, I, I was one of the original members, so we're still going, but we've kind of had a couple of years off. We've kind of between lineups at the moment, and we've had a, it's a, a, a relax. We, we weren't going to have a lineup for this year's Shetland Folk Festival, but of course, everything's been postponed. So uh -huh. we're looking forward to it. When you're in the heyday, were you in the mainland when you were playing? We, yeah, we were based in Edinburgh for three years in the early 80s. Uh -huh. And we travelled all over Europe for, for Edinburgh. And, and we, it was a great scene in Edinburgh at the time because there were like a Sully Wizard and the Boys of the Lock. And uh -huh. Lots of great musicians in the pub uh -huh. sessions. It was fantastic times. Uh -huh. a, bit, a big, a big uh, musical fan of mine is uh, Freeland Barber, who's. Hi, not doing well, yeah. Nice. Like, I've, I've, I just got his new book there, and the music in there is fantastic. For a uh -huh. That's great. He's a lovely guy, Freeland. Yeah. Written some great tunes. Aye, ah, great music. Beautiful mm -hmm. music. Yeah. Where, where did you in Edinburgh? So I can't hear there, Ross. When you were based in Edinburgh, where did you practice? Did you practice in the, the pubs in Edinburgh? Well, we know we just we, we we were based there because we knew all the that was the kind of centre, the folk scene at the time in, in Scotland, and we just travelled out for the RT all over Europe, all the festivals. Denmark, Germany, France, all through England, Scotland, Ireland. Some great times. Aye, good. Aye, good. Just we were good. all in our early twenties then. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to judge a book by its cover, but I know what you mean. Aye. Here's right. Peter back. Here's Peter back. How are we doing? We never, now? We never know. Any, you're glad, Peter. <laughs> any better? Ross carries on the questions. We help you. Excellent, good. He's he's like that. He, he's no bother that boy. He he knows what he's up to. Taking all yeah. the <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you you were talking about when I was doing in Edinburgh. There was that nineteen eighty. You headed away. Nineteen eighty. Yeah, right. we, we we started the band in seventy eight and and played around the Shetland all the time. And then nineteen eighty, we decided to give up our jobs and go and try it full time. For we did for, for three years. We had a few different lineups over the three years. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that would have taken you all over Europe at the time. It, it did, yeah, some great times, very memorable yeah. times. Right, right. And some not so um, memorable. <laughs> <laughs> but the band, I mean, the band's still famous to this day. If you say homebrew to anybody, they can't exactly who the band is. Yeah, they? I hope it's all for the right reasons. <laughs> yeah, it's good reason. Good reason. Um, and you, do you fancy getting us a wee tune? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get the mandolin this time, Peter. Brilliant, that would be great. So, um, you're kind of world famous as a mandolin player as well. There's all these people trying to <laughs> write things about you on the internet and things. And how does he do tremolo like that? Oh, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a what mandolin made by. Sorry. What are you giving us this time? Uh, well, I was going to do a couple of hornpipes, but I've had a couple of messages to, to do with the tune that I wrote, called Serendipity. 
which is very, it's, it's when we do the Shetland mandolin band, it's, it's becoming really popular among a lot of the, the young players too, so, so I'll do, I don't know how, I don't know how that sound we know back in the no chords, but I'll do it anyway. That'll sound, that'll sound great, take it away. We did that on our last CD many years ago. Uh -huh. Lovely. Tell me, the pipes. Uh, tell, tell me, Gary, the banjo and the mandolin, I mean, the set one obviously is so cool, it's a fiddle. And what did you have to play the banjo and the mandolin? Well, my grandfather played the mandolin and, and my and the Lerwick side, and my father played the mandolin. Right. There's always a, there's always a mandolin in the house, and, and then it's the same fingering on the tenor banjo, just a bigger stretch. And I always fancy trying the 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 banjo along with accordions and fiddles. So it sounds great. I love the sound that again the oh, Irish yeah. get with the banjos and Sully Wizard. I was a big fan of Sully Wizard with the banjo and the accordion and the fiddle. So yeah. I always fancy, I always wanted to get a tenor banjo and try it. So I think yeah. I was a bit maybe I think I was about seventeen, eighteen, no, maybe older than that before I got a banjo and tried really? playing along with. It. In the pubs, yeah. That's when you started. That's when you started. Yeah, when I, mean, I started in the mandolin, a lot younger, but and it's the same finger. It's just a bigger stretch with a left hand. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, uh, no, I love, I love the banjo and the accordion together. I think it just yeah. goes absolutely. I, I actually love playing. Along. It's great with the pipes as well. I like getting it. Yeah. Even in B, even in B flat, you get the capo and the banjo, and you can play along with the pipers. And, yeah, um, sounds really, really good. Um, the, 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 obviously, we've missed our folk festival and that this year, and we've missed yeah. Orkney as well. We've missed the whole lot. But uh, yeah. is there any memorable times that you can remember a Shetland folk festival having tunes? Or? Oh, loads. So many. I can't remember. Uh, I mean, it's been some fantastic years. I think one that always sticks out for me was when you had Rodney Mother was here, the American fiddler. Oh, yeah. And Peter, yeah. Peter, Barnes, Peter Barnes on piano. And they were tremendous. And then John McGann, he played mandolin with him. He was here the second time he came. Okay. Uh, they they were so good. They, they were great in the concerts, and then they just wanted to play in the sessions as well. And they just some great sessions all night with them. Yeah. And Peter Barnes, Peter Barnes would sit and read a book in the middle of a session. He would read halfway through a book, and somebody <laughs> say, "You turn on the piano, Peter." And it might be Margaret Robertson on the piano or somebody else. And he would just take a turn on the piano, and then do a few tunes. And he was an amazing piano player. Then back to his book again. Back to the book. Tremendous player. Remember the guitar player Chris New Newman? Was it Chris Newman? 
Chris is a fantastic uh, player, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing him up in Lunds doing the same thing. The whole concert was going on, and he just sat and read a, whole, a book the whole time, and then he went on and done his bit, and then it was yeah. just amazing. It was oh, just, yeah. Just the way these guys playing all the time, you know, and just getting on with it, kind of yeah. stuff. That's it. But, no, but hopefully, here's hoping by next year we'll maybe can start getting back to some sort of kind of... We've got a lot, lot, of last, lot of last time to make up for, Peter. <laughs> yeah, well, the one thing that's good, eh, I suppose, the music, the music's still there, the music doesn't change. Uh, we're still going to be there. We're having to present it in slightly different ways here. Yeah. Uh, but when you see the, the... Actually, it's been really encouraging because when we've seen the amount of people that are tuning in to even this show here, mm. it's, it's just incredible. Uh, the amount of support there is out there for traditional music. In fact, we're, I think we're finding that there's far more support out there than we ever realised that people just fair, fair enjoy it, you know. So, uh, 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 some, somebody send you a handsome chap, cousin. Uh, uh, cousin he, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see your hands as well. So. Oh, uh, I see. You, have, 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 have you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got an old thing there, Gary? And I uh, hope oh, can you manage to stay with us for the rest of the show when we bring David on as well. I can, I can do, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that would be good. That would be really yeah. good. But you yeah, want to get an old thing with now? I'll give some news, eh? Yeah. I'll get Ross to uh, get the meeting. Yeah. This uh, is this is. Uh, uh, Sorry, Peter. Must I do this? Yeah, you go for it. You go for it now, and then I'll get Ross to do a wee Okay, aye. Yeah. And we'll bring David I'll on. I'll bring him for, for, for yeah. Alan this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, jump, jump a boot or something. Jump up and boot or something. I'll jump up and do a play. <laughs> this, this is uh, Hurlick's Reel, uh, Mary Pottinger's Reel, and uh, Bunny Rig Chase. Crack up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got it. Brilliant. Brilliant. You were talking there earlier, and just before we go about the mandolin band, there's a big mandolin band in there, now, isn't there? There is, yeah. There's, it's, it's varied in size for 50 at one stage to maybe 20, 30 is now get nowadays, most of the nights. That's brilliant, though. It's great. It's a, and range, it's range in age for, for, it was ranging in age for, for, and I think it was for 9 to 79 at one time. Brilliant. Yeah, that, that's really good. It's, it's a great way for the young people to learn as well when they can get in with some experience and sit and play and, and enjoy yeah. it. You know? Well, Jen, Jenny Henry is teaching at, at the high level shop in Lerwick and, and she's yeah. got a lot of people, yeah. so a lot of them is coming into the band. It's great. Fantastic. Brilliant. I, I think I'm the only one that can't read music in the band. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you you could you could learn move. You know, I, if, if you uh, have you ever hear any mistakes, it's me because other rest of them was reading the music. They came the notes. <laughs> Brilliant, Gary. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're going, to keep having you, me. we're going to keep you here. And, uh, I'm going to get a yeah. uh, young man to play a say, and then we're going to bring David Greenberg on and all that stuff. We have an auditorium at the end of the day. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing tonight? Are you there? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I get a bit of feedback. I don't know how to fix that. Um, See, yeah, yeah, if everybody just mute the mic, so you just mute the mic and we're not playing. It totally helps. Yeah. Cool. Um, See you. Are you? Um, have you got things stuck in the box again? <laughs> yeah, well, give it, give I'm going to a set of jigs that I wrote, uh, and the set of jigs that I wrote are all about people or places in Ballinlough. I wrote them in 2002. Oh, uh, 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 Ballinlough, is that where the famous transport cafe is? Aye, the, 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 aye, aye. And it's so just, just, just an amazing place. Aye, it's still. It's, 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 I'm going to open up I'm sure when Gary was touring with Homebrew, I'm sure they stopped at Ballon Rouge for their breakfast somewhere. Uh -huh. What's that, Pierre? <laughs> Did you ever stop at Ballon Lueg for your breakfast to go up the A9? I can't remember. I'm not sure. Well, I'm sure you would have. It's a kind of folk, every, all folk bands kind of pull into good eateries. All right. Okay. I used to get all the chip shops in Scotland at one time. <laughs> Mind, mind that's how we used to get ways to go to gigs, you know, they used to say, before mobile phones and all that, they used to say, go up yon street till you see that chip shop at the end and turn right and then turn right. left. Yeah. That, that, that was a geography lesson, a chip shop. Anyway, go on, young Mr. McNaughton, let's hear this jig. I've got a set of jigs that I wrote for, for Ballon Lug, but I just seen flashing up on the screen there was John Selby. And... John got in touch after last week's show, and it turns out that he worked with my dad 40 years ago on the oil rigs. So the pair of them have restruck a friendship, and it's actually escalated from there, and they've got in touch with another uh, workmate that they had, uh, a guy called Stephen Carey out in America. I think he's out in Texas. And his daughter's out in Canada, so they're all watching the show tonight, so... Uh, this Balamoog set I'll dedicate to them, uh, and uh, if more people can get back in touch with the stories, I think that completes the, the musical circle. I think. But I'll play this set of jigs for them. Nice to go.
Alex. Good play there, Russ. Thank you, thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. Have we lost Peter again? Rebecca says there's a storm brew, brewing in the east coast of Cape Breton or something. I'm wondering is that something that. Anyway, is that? Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, yeah. The next village along from Pitlochry, if you like, is Aberfeldy. In Aberfeldy, there's a, a, a mandolin and banjo maker called Ewan Chattanagh. Of, I don't know if you've heard of him. No, I've heard the name, but I'm done a kid him. No. Uh, he makes quite a lot of the bluegrass sort of instruments for America. Was he, was he on TV with Billy Connolly one night? That's right, aye. That's right, aye. Uh, I oh, saw yeah, him. Right. He gave Billy a banjo. That's right, aye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. That was tremendous instruments. Ah, the good and beautiful instruments they are. Yeah. Sure, Billy Connolly could have afforded his own banjo, I'm sure. I'm right. sure he could. You he, he offered to pay, but the boy said he wouldn't, he wouldn't <laughs> take anything with Billy. Oh, right. Brilliant stuff. That was a fair old bit of syncopation going on there, Roscoe. Hi, did you like that? Hello, David. How are you, sir? Hello. Gentlemen, this is uh, David Greenberg. How are you? Are you well? Hi, I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm enjoying the wonderful music. Magic, thanks for uh, sticking about and coming on and joining us today. I, th I think you've got a very, very busy schedule today. Have you got a wife and a daughter with birthdays? <laughs> a mother and a daughter both with birthdays. A mother and a daughter with birthdays, yeah. You've got to, well, that takes up time. That takes up time. Oh, we had a, a, a good visit on Zoom. One is in France, one is in the east coast of the US, and one is in Canada and Halifax, and I'm on the west coast uh, in Oregon. So, Brilliant. yeah, my mother just turned 90 today. Oh, fantastic. That's really good. That's good. And you're all well. That's good. Yeah. You're looking well. You're Thank looking you. well. Yeah. So you're, yeah. So you're in Oregon yourself then? What's that? Is that Oregon, Oregon, yeah. Oregon. But where, where, were you born? Was it Maryland you were brought up? Did I read Yeah, that? my mom's yeah. still there. Yes. Near, right. Not too far from Washington, D.C. Fantastic. Um, um, we won't say that well, too loudly. I think, I, think, I think Rebecca's showing us a picture Storm. of the storm. That's good. Mm. Rebecca, we're we are much more interesting than the storm. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> we can be a, we can be our own storm. Don't worry, Don't worry about it. That's not a storm. Gary, that's, we're, that's, that's a that's a summer's night in Shetland. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, David, uh, wonderful that you can join us. Um you uh right Two things going on in your life, Baroque music and Cape Breton fiddle music. Mm -hmm. Well, just at yeah. the moment, of course, there's not much going on that we don't oh. make up for yeah. ourselves, right? But uh, but yes, that those are the two kind of musical languages I speak. Yeah, uh, and, and we are fortunate because we're all over the world here. Um, and as you say, music, wonderful language, just lots of different accents. So... Uh, we're we're kind of lucky in a way that we can get on with each other with that kind of thing. So, how what came along first for you then? Was it the baroque music, the classical side, or the? Uh, well, it, it, it kind of uh, as a as a little child, I um, I uh, picked up some fiddle tunes by ear and also um, the classical music through the Suzuki method as a as a very small you know four or five year old kid, and then mm -hmm. in university. Um, I switched over to the early music stream of the of the classical music, so the Baroque music, and that's so I'd already been playing some different kinds of uh, traditional music. Um, the Smithsonian Folk Festival is is in in Washington, and so I got to see a, be exposed to a lot of wonderful fiddling, and including uh, Quebecois fiddling of Jean Carignan, and of course lots of Irish and Scottish and so on. But uh, when I was in university, um, I met somebody. Uh, who was already uh, a, a longtime student of Cape Breton music, and uh, her name's uh, Kate Dunley. And eventually, well, she got me onto the Cape Breton music, and so I kind of veered off onto that path and dove all the way into that. Uh, and we we ended up uh, making a writing a book together about that music. And then I met Doug McPhee, the great piano player from New Waterford, and we've been uh, we've had a, a friendship and a musical partnership uh, for now. 35 years or so so that's kind oh, yeah. of that's kind of how that fantastic. goes yeah fantastic do, do you fancy giving us a wee bit of music and then we'll oh. get back to yeah absolutely yeah yeah um i think i'll uh start with a 
um, a group of uh, um, maybe a, a group in a um, march uh, called Alistair McLaren, Dr. Alistair C. McLaren. Um, I think I knew the whole name of that. Uh, four part hype march and then a uh, bunch of straff spays and a few reels. I won't get into the names because I'm not sure what I'm playing yet. Um, yeah. So here we go. Thank you. 
Fantastic, sir. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that groove you get into, that Cape Breton groove. It's just like a it's like a train that just goes. And you can just tell people want to dance to that. That's just yeah. fantastic. I think going. Were you dancing there up the road, Gary? Were you? I was dancing and my feet were going like mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. It's the the spatial thing, eh? and it just, you can yeah. tell that it's so set on dancing, you know, it's just for people getting getting that feet going, you know, and it's just uh, fantastic. Do you play, do you get a chance to play a lot for dancing? Or? Uh, for dancing, well, for some step dancing, not so much um, for square dancing around here. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so the step dancing and the square dancing, the square dancing sets, is it like just set dancing? Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the square dancing in Cape Breton is uh, is more, uh, you know, there's some st three different sets usually. It depends on where in Cape Breton, but usually there are, there's either one set of uh, jigs and two sets of reels or the other way around, two sets of jigs and one set of reels. But there's no straff space unle unless uh, yeah. somebody's step dancing to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but no, it's fabulous to, to hear. And uh, have you been to Shetland? Have you ever been to Shetland? I ha uh, have. I now I've not been to Shetland. No, no, I would love to. I would love to go. No, I've. Uh, uh, no, I've. I'd love I think, to do I that. Think, I think you would enjoy it here somehow. I think uh, you would yeah, enjoy I the June Book Festival. Yeah, I I know. Uh, let's see, uh, Katrina McDonald is yep. from the Shetlands. Yeah, I know of her beautiful player, um, but I don't know too many, too much else about the Shetlands. So. Because I, know the, the, I noticed you'd played Celtic Colours quite a few times. And, uh, a couple of times, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and I, I, had a, I had a listen online to, there was one track on uh, YouTube that you had done uh, with a harp and the cello uh, that was, it was lovely, really. Oh, lovely. yes, yeah. Kim Robertson. Yeah. And probably Abby Newton on cello. Yeah, Kim Robinson. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, fabulous. Really, really, really nice sound. So, uh, what projects have you got up your sleeve for the coming? Uh, well, few? I'm just in in the uh, the last uh, stages of preparation for a course that I'm teaching online. I'm calling it Cape Breton Deep Dive. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so it's a. It's, I've I've given a few uh, sort of um, 
dipping my toe into the Zoom workshop thing in, in May, I gave a few free workshops uh, and this okay. seemed to be very popular and, and uh, good feedback. And so I decided to dip my toe a little further and offer a whole course in it. So we're about to, uh, starting next week, so. I think we're all, finding, we're, we're all finding uh, we've had to uh, get on with technology here in a big, big way. Um, I, I, I teach accordion in schools in Shetland, and that's how I'm teaching just now is VCs. It's all VC to the home just now. Um, Ross teaches in uh, Robert Gordon's for piping and things, and you're doing online teaching just now as well. Everybody's mm. doing it. And there's actually some quite nice sides coming up in amongst it as well. It's made the world a tiny place mm -hmm. uh, that anybody can access lessons anywhere mm -hmm. and uh, access the music. And, and uh, it's, it's, I think it's really good. Let's see yourself doing a course that's uh, a specific course in that style of music. That would have been quite hard for someone in Scotland to source someone to do that. So maybe mm -hmm. you can get people's. Mm. There, uh, one of the participants is is someone in, somebody lives in Scotland. Uh, yeah. in week, so <laughs> I had to I had to figure out the time zone so that the people on the west coast here and the people in Scotland could both meet at the same time, just like yeah. just like now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, but it's 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 amazing what you can do and what what we're all getting. To. One of the things we're finding is that our pupils are practicing more because I think they're getting more time to practice just now. Yeah. And, and and they're they're turning up for lessons on time. You don't have to go looking for them halfway through a high school somewhere uh, because they've got their certain time and they have to be there, and that's it. So it's, it's actually working pretty well for that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that 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 way. So, but that's really encouraging that you're managing to because I take it you're playing full time music as a career. Yes, role. yeah, that that was my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very difficult times just now for a. a you know, a full-time performer, very, very difficult, and it's, it's made things, uh, but it's amazing how resilient musicians can be and, and start coming uh, through things. Mm. So have you got anything else you would like to share with us? Well, I don't know what the time is like. I, I, I see it's the top uh, of the hour, but... Uh, uh, we're okay, on you go. Oh. Look at look. <laughs> well, look at look. <laughs> Nobody's going to kick us off. No, no. Um, no. It's Rebecca, and she, 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 she's okay. She's no, okay. okay. <laughs> well, uh, if, if you'd like, I'd, I'll give you a little taste of a combination of the Baroque and uh, the, the traditional music that I do. That would okay. be fantastic. I'd love okay. to hear that. Okay. And so, then, uh, yeah, uh, can you tell me, David, do you have a w website that people can visit? I noticed yeah. earlier. What, what's your, uh, don't worry people about writing things down. Yeah. You can watch you can watch this back okay but, yeah. david what's your website you're on yeah it's david greenberg violinist.com yeah and uh, gary did you have one for homebrew as well not no <laughs> not now okay right. not no. that's all right uh, I, I meant to ask you earlier on if you had one but that's great uh, i had a look on david's earlier on and there's a lot of interesting stuff on there actually it's really very interesting so i would yeah, recommend yeah, you know, there's some. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of all about putting as much uh, resources in people's hands these days as as possible. It just feels like it's a time for sharing and a time yeah. for making things available, and not a time for just kind of closing up into your own kind of bubble. Well, we have to do that physically, so we might as well do it. Do what we can to open up. And so I'm I'm I've tried. I'm starting to put out as many resources as I can for people on the site. There, you'll see some tune resources. You can get audio and and music and and even access to whole workshops and things like that video so just just by with a click of your mouse people have a look people have a look. I, i'm fortunate that i do have one audience david that in the field next door to me that there's about 20 sheep 20 rams and i i do play to them every so often and 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 uh, some some sometimes they stand about for a little while and sometimes they just bog off and disappear <laughs> So it's really just like a normal audience, really. Yeah, a very honest normal audience, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's have, let's have a look. I'm so intrigued to hear this. Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, just, I could do two. I think I'll, um, I think I'll, uh, well, I'll just say one thing uh, about before I play the, the Baroque music, of course, is from the, the 16 and 1700s. And um, 
in Scotland towards the end of the second half of the 1700s. It was called, uh, some people call it the, the golden age of, of Scottish fiddling. Uh, and that was just when um, the time of Neil Gow and so on, uh, that was just when towards the end of the, of the 1700s when the clearances began. And so uh, people were took their, the culture of, of Scotland out and you know ended up in places like Cape Breton. Um, so my point is that the uh, in Scotland around that time you had Baroque music, music of Handel and Corelli and so on, and the Scottish traditional music happening at the same time with the same players and, and people uh, composing music in both styles. Um, and so it's kind of it did have it does have kind of a, a place in history where it kind of does fit all together. But I've I've started trying to um, see what happens when I experiment and apply some of the Cape Breton uh, styles, with, uh, which comes of course from the 18th century in Scotland uh, to music of Bach. Uh, and I found that's it's kind of fun. So here's uh, an Alamann from uh, the Bach second partita in D minor. And then I'll go into uh, a lovely jig called uh, uh, Joy Go With My Love. And then eventually I'll get into a Strath's Bay that I wrote for my daughter, Sarah, Mul Sarah Mullaney Greenberg. It's called Welcome Sarah Mullaney for when she was born 29 years ago today. Um, and this the style of, of Bach I'm playing is not uh, kind of uh, Baroque, absolutely correct Baroque style. I'm actually combining some of the Cape Breton bowings and feel um, just to sort of see what happens. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. David, wonderful concept and it works. And it works. It works <laughs> really, really well. Gentlemen, we are really running out of time tonight. I'd love to go on to midnight, but that's just how things go here. The music gets carried away sometimes. Gary uh, and David, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, having me. If you've enjoyed it half as much as we have, that yes. means we've enjoyed it twice as much as you have. <laughs> Something like that, eh? Okay. Nice right. to meet you. Listen, guys, thank you very much. And we'll uh, hopefully see you very soon. People, please remember and check out the websites. That would be really good. Hello, Rebecca. She's back. <laughs> Rebecca, we're going that to was get awesome. Ross. We're going that to was get so Ross. amazing. We're going to get Ross to play what we pipe tune to finish off the night tonight. Uh, and uh, so you can awesome. take me. Right. Thanks to Gary and David. Thanks again. Thank you. We'll see you. And, and then if you leave Ross and me now, Rebecca, that would be cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you. Ross. Ross, Ross the man. What are you going to what are you going to give us? I'm going to give you a wee tune. It's a wee tune that I wrote this week actually. And when I was teaching the kids up at uh, up at Robert Gordon's, one of the pupils, one of the, the beginners was actually watching the show. Uh, they've got, they, uh, they, they were, I couldn't believe it. I thought he was joking. But oh, uh, they, they've got family in Canada, and they obviously relayed back, and they watched it uh, later on. But but he he asked, uh, can you play something on the practice channel? And yeah. I, th I thought, well, why not? Because that's, why yeah. not? Yeah, so oh. I'm going to play a tune that I wrote this week. Uh, called is a tune called Dalmarnock, which is a stretch of the River Tay, and there's a beautiful walk up the hill. It's very, very steep, but it brings you out to a beautiful vista where you're looking up the up, up and uh, oh, oh. so the the tune's written. But when I got to the top, it was through the woods, and then all of a sudden I was met with this beautiful view. But I, my heart, my old knackered heart, was. Uh, it was just about to explode, so my, I tried to put my heartbeat into the tune, if you like. So there's a bit okay. of really, there's really really heavy gracing in this tune, and it's meant to represent a heartbeat. So anyway, the, right. tune, the tune's called Dalmarnock, and it's for that, cool. that that day anyway. So it's on the practice chant and dedicated to the pupils at Robert Gardens. Cool. Just don't don't have a heart attack or something. <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs>
Good man. Good man. Good excellent. There we go. Hi, Rebecca. Are you there again? Are you wanting to come on screen? We're just going to finish up now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much for this week again. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's just so varied, this program, that we're just having so much fun and there's different instruments coming on all the time. Next week, we've got an amazing lineup for you again. It's going to be mind blowing. So if you could share it about and let people know about the show, that would just be fantastic. And uh, I hope you don't get blown away by that gale that's coming your way, Rebecca. Me too. Sure. I'll hang on to my britches, Peter. Yeah, you do that. Listen, thanks very much for tonight again. Nice seeing you, Ross. Uh, thanks to Gary and David. Look these guys up. Phenomenal musicians coming on and giving their time to entertain you tonight. So I hope you've really, really enjoyed that. Thanks again, Rebecca, for holding it together at the back there. Thank you. Cool. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. And that was uh, our musicians from Scotland playing. I want to thank all of our viewers. Up next, you guys, we have a very special show. It's an uncomfortable conversation uh, somewhat, but we have a very special show coming up with our hosts, Heidi Marshall and Annie Bernard Daisley. They're going to be coming on with their first episode of 231 Calls for Justice. I encourage you to put a moment aside and please join us on the next show. We have a variety of speakers that are going to bring a lot of information that is really important to all of us, uh, especially considering the recent events that has just taken place. So once again, I really encourage you to join us. Stand by, going live shortly in uh, 10 minutes. Thank you.